Hello, people of the world. Welcome to Blunder, the app template that makes Blender look and feel like Unreal Engine 4. So this is going to be a complete beginner's guide to how to get this installed and running. This is assuming you don't already have Blender, and this uh, app template does rely on Blender 2.8. So first things first, we're going to go to our browser of choice. We can go to blender.org. You can find under download. You could go download Blender, but that's not what we want. That is the 2.79 version. We actually want the 2.8. So click on that. At the moment, uh, I've tested this on Windows and on Mac. It did not work on Mac. Uh, Blender is in a bit of a transition state. As you can see, this is a beta at the moment. So there will be some things changing. There will be some things probably across versions that haven't been finalized yet or haven't necessarily uh, been tested across all versions, so it, this has been tested on Windows, and that's all I can say for now. So if you've got 64-bit, 32-bit, download whichever version you want, just make sure it's the 2.8 beta. At that point, you can go to this link, uh, and you can get this for free. Oops. And I'll be putting this link in the description, uh, and this gives you a little breakdown, but I will go through all that. So let's say you download that. You can also get an HDRI, a free HDRI from HDRI Haven. All of these links will be in the description of the video. And you can download this if it, for whatever reason, isn't already present in your Blender file. So let's assume you've got all these downloaded and installed. We would then open Blender. Give it a second to start up. And this will be what you see when you first start it. Uh, you're going to see the splash screen. This down here is the list of application templates. So our application template is going to be in this list after we install it. You can also get to that list by going File, New. It'll appear up there. So we're going to go File, Install Application Template. This is going to be wherever your uh, zip file was downloaded to. I know when I was working on it, this is where I installed it from. So. We find our blunder underscore zero underscore one dot zip. Install the template from file. Everything looks pretty much the same as it did a second ago. So we go file new and now whoop, file new and we can see blunder is now one of the options. Click on that. It'll take a second to load because it has a few items already in the scene. So now this should look familiar to anyone who has used Unreal Engine before. Uh, this scene has been set up to look like the default third-person template, and you're going to notice right away there are a few changes. So, biggest thing is uh, left-click selects. This is something that you could switch around in Blender. Um, for whatever reason, Blender defaulted to right-click select. Left-click now selects objects. Left click and drag opens the box select. So this will select anything that is contained within that box. And control click, control left click, will remove items from that selection. Shift left click will add items back to that selection. The next big change comes in the navigation. Getting around Blender, I used to find, was a bit of a pain for me because I was so used to the navigation in Unreal Engine which feels really natural to me, uh, so I have basically ported that over. So now, when you want to move around your scene, just like in Unreal, you hold down the right-click button, and you can use W, A, S, and D to get around. And this works in object mode, or switching over to edit mode, works the same way. So back in object mode, we're going to move around, just a few features of this scene. We've got the Unreal Engine mannequin here to give you an idea of scale for designing props. We've also got a little bit of a reflection capture happening here on him, so you can see these reflections are what we have. You can see the stairs there. And if we look up in our mannequin, oops, mannequin in the scene here, you can see the mannequin, and we've got the reflection capture there. So, I've also got a little handy uh, quick start guide here. So, like I said, left click select, right mouse will move you around. 
And here's another fun thing that comes in Blender 2.8. We've got these move uh, transform widgets, I guess. So just like in Unreal Engine, W selects your move tool. You can now grab any of these by the axis and shift it around. Our uh, grid value looks like it's set a little high. So let's go in and change our grid value. Okay, and that's a little better. So there we go, that's our move. E grabs the rotation tool. Undo that. R is the scale tool. We can take another look at the little monstrosity that we've created right here, and then undo that. And you can also hit T to bring up the multi-tool, uh, which is all of your move, rotate, and uh, scale widgets all in one. And if you've got a giant widget here covering up the object you want to access, you can always press S, and it'll just take you back to that select box tool. Or conversely, you can press A. That will deselect everything. A again will select all. If you are far away in your scene, let's say we've got our mannequin selected, and we're somewhere else, we're not sure where we are, we can hit F, and that will focus on the selected object. So I have disabled Blender's default move tools. So the, uh, if you're accustomed to the click on an object and then use G, S, R to move, scale, and rotate, I have disabled those. I tried my best to leave all the other settings that I didn't absolutely need to touch untouched so that I would be as undisruptive to your workflow as I could be. But I've also tried to disable things where there's overlap between the way Unreal would do something and the way uh, Blender would do something. So for instance, with the tool short, uh, the transform tool shortcut here, we press T to get our everything tool. Uh, in Blender default, that would show or hide this tools panel right here. So that's an example of one of the things. If you want to see every change that I made, you can go into preferences, into your key map, and anything that has the restore here indicates somewhere that I've made changes. So you can see it's primarily in 3D view across the two uh, object and edit modes. Uh, the movement speed, if it's a little too slow or too fast, it's in walk under walk speed. So the right click shortcut activates this walk navigation mode. Under key map here, this is where you select your left click uh, select and using that A button to select or deselect all. So that about covers the features for right now. Uh, I am planning to add some tools over here to emulate the Unreal Engine interface. Uh, so things like adding basic meshes like cubes or uh, cameras, lights, um, just having them there. It is quite easy to get to that in Blender already. If, uh, if you're new to Blender, Shift-A will uh, bring up this menu that lets you do all of these things. This is more just like an aesthetic choice to bring it more in line with Unreal Engine. And uh, I also would like to add a few more uh, macro, I guess, Python type commands to cover some of the things that I commonly do, which is like UV remapping or mesh optimization. So I thought adding the tool buttons would be a good way to get some experience with the Python scripting before I dove into uh, anything like a bigger macro type script. One issue that I can see people having is possibly the uh, HDR doesn't appear in the sky, uh, could show up as pink. In that case, you can just re-add it. So you can see under your world settings here, under surface, we're using nodes. You want to be using nodes, so make sure that's clicked. And then we can go into our shading mode, make sure we're under our world settings. If we're under object, you're not going to see any of that. So under world, you can see this is where we're getting our HDR source. You can always just click it and then go back into wherever you have. It's Approaching Storm 4K. That's the one that I've chosen. And then we can see it's back in there. And if you want, you can always switch it to background. This might work a little better for modeling. I've left links to all the files and sites that you'll need in the description and a link to my Twitter page. You can uh, drop a comment here on the YouTube page, or you can reach me on Twitter if you have any requests or suggestions. Thanks very much.